Now joined by Tuka Rask of the Boston Bruins on set. Tuka, it's great to see you. How are things? Very good, thank you. How does, it, how does one recharge when you played over 100 National Hockey League games the season before? How's the summer like for you? Uh, well, for us, it was we just went home to Finland uh, about a week after the season, and then you unwind for you know, a solid month there and kind of let things cool off, recover from the season, and then get back at it. I know you've matured in your time in the NHL, but are you a guy who watches Game 7 over? Do you throw Game 7 <laughs> out the window? Do you stew on it? Uh, I don't watch it. I don't, I don't sit on it. It's, to me, it's, you know, you're, you're so intense for two months. Right. You know, you play every other night, and then, you know, once it's over, you kind of, like, take a couple of days and let your mind and body kind of, like, just relax, and then that's it. Right. It's just hockey, you know. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and... I don't think there's any reason to watch it all over again, especially when you lost. Would you have been different younger in your career? I don't think so. No. Yeah. no. Maybe I, I might have been more, you know, rattled for a longer period of the time. But, right. But uh, no, I wouldn't have watched it. That's a, that's an amazing answer to me, because if if I would have lost a game seven. I would have stewed like a like a child for, for multiple months. Well, he stews like yeah. a child well, over I a lot of things. I do it for things less important <laughs> than a game seven. Yeah, me too. But, but is that just? But does that go with from what we know about you, your mentality generally as a pro? Like not too high, not too low. Does is that does that? Yeah, that? I, I think so. I and I think you know once you gain some experience, you play, you know, a lot of hockey games. You kind of like learn to realize that there's more important things in life than than just hockey. And and uh, yeah, I think you know I've. Learn to realize that you know you, it doesn't help to like you know sit on it or you know even be too happy about the hockey. It's just kind of like stay stay even and you know let let things roll. When you uh, when you guys won Game Six, when there was an obscene amount of people outside the arena in St. Louis and they were ready for a party, yeah. Did you guys think, all right, we got this now? Was that the mentality? I thought, I thought so. Yeah. I mean, I, what did we lose? Three out of four at home. Yeah. I mean. That's that's what I was thinking. There's no chance we're going to lose three out of four at home. But right. then again, you know, it was a it was a weird game, game seven. You know, it's a game seven, so anything anything can happen. And Ask then, Lee fans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. right. So, uh, yeah, it's just one of those that, yeah, it happens. You know, it seems like you guys have a, a great culture around that team, and a lot of people talk about how they want to change cultures and create cultures. Mm -hmm. Do you know how you guys got there? Yeah, well, I, I actually talked about it yesterday, yesterday with the uh, athletic. You know, when we got in, it was me, Kretschy, Marshy, you know, Berge had been there. Yeah. But there's like seven or eight of us. And we learned from the guys who, who were there before. You know, right. Mark Recchi, Sean Thornton, yeah. uh, veterans who, who had played a lot of games in the NHL. And then they taught us. And then, you know, we kind of have that same groove for many, many years now. Yeah. And now we have young guys coming in. And we're trying to teach them the same things, that, you know, once we're retired from hockey, that they're going to keep the same culture within the team. And right. I think that's kind of like the legacy as you want to you want to leave as a player because, you know, you want to take care of the organization as well. How much does Z have to do with that, Zidane Chara? A lot. Yeah. A lot. You know, I mean, he, he was brought in as a leader, and he's been that ever since for, whatever, 15 years now right. with the Bruins. So, you know, yeah, he's, he's our captain, and, and he's a huge part of it. Is he still the strongest guy on the team? Oh, I'm sure he is up there, yeah. We hear We're, stories of, like of just, a mythical nature yes. of strength. It's oh, almost yeah. like he's a unicorn. Yeah, yeah. I mean, his workout resumes are pretty pretty impressive. <laughs> I, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> um, I, I want to talk about your season last year, specifically the postseason you had. And I'm not saying this to, to, to make you feel bad in any way, but you're aware. If, if it went the other way, you're probably also lifting a con smite the way you played in that yeah. postseason. You were phenomenal. What... How did, how did you get to that level? Like, how were you feeling that good in, in that biggest spot in your career? What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you point to? Uh, well, I think being fresh, you know, I didn't play too many games in the regular season. I think that helped, that yeah. you're, you're mentally and physically ready for the playoff run. Uh, that's a big part of it. But then, you, you know, you just try to be at your best. You go game by game, and then you, you just, I think that's the biggest thing. You don't get too high or too low. And you just let things roll and, and don't put too much pressure on yourself. I think that's what we had last year. It was a great thing that we played for each other and, and nobody was feeling that they had to be a superhero out there. Right. You know, uh, different different games, we had different 
heroes, but you know, we were just playing for each other, and, and I think that helped me too. We broadcast out of Toronto, so we hear a little bit uh, on Twitter from Leaf fans. Can you explain your dominance over them when it matters most? Uh, you know, uh, how many game sevens we've had now? Yeah. Two, three. Two, you want to go yeah. back three, yeah. Yeah, well, it's just, you know, like us in the finals, the game seven, it can go either way. And, right. You know, it's just lately it's been going our way. I mean, series with them, I think they've been very, very tight. And, you know, I think we've had the home ice. Right. In a game seven, so that's made a difference. But um, Is it even mental, do you think? I, I don't know. I, no. To me, it's not. I, to me, I... Every year and every game is a new game. I don't. Right. I don't That's an acceptable answer. It's not like we're looking for something deep. Sometimes it's just whatever's yeah. in front of you. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. you know, yeah. But it's like if you if you win certain against certain teams for many years, then you know you might think, well, you know, we've done it before, so I think we're going to do it now. And the yeah. other team is like, well, shit. Yeah. I don't know. You know, it's gone the other way so many times. It might play a role there, but I don't think of that way. Right. Yeah. It, it so looks like you're in their heads now. <laughs> <laughs> I got to I got to be honest. Um, in terms of the continuity of your group, like you look around the league and there's so much change all the time and there's change that could still be coming with certain guys. We don't know what's going to happen. When you look at your group, it's, it's that same core. Yeah. How important is that? And do you think other organizations really respect how important that is? Uh, well, I think it's, it is very unique what we have in the Bruins. We happen to have the same core group of guys for as long as I've been there for right. 10, 12 years. And I think it does help for that continue, you know, continue the, uh, be having that success as a, as a team and as an organization because you don't have to bring 10 to 15 new guys every year. Uh, you know, we've, we've changed a lot. We've brought in young guys and, and, you know, but then again, we have the eight, eight or nine veteran guys who are helping them to uh, adapt to the culture and the game. And, and, you know, I think I can't say other organizations respect that or not, but, you know, it's been working for us. Does that make it more important to get Charlie McAvoy done and in camp and not have what other teams have had with their RFAs? You know what? I, we play whoever is in the locker room. I hope Charlie signs soon, but right. it's just the business side of things that sometimes, and this day and age, it tends to be like these guys that they don't sign necessarily before the camp, and right. it's fine. You know, we just, we go out there and we play who's out, who, whoever's in the locker room, and that's all you can control, really. Right. Uh, before we let you go, just for my own curiosity, who's who's the toughest guy to face when he's coming in over the blue line right now in the league? He comes over the blue line, you're like, okay, I need to be on my game right now. There's a lot of them. There's <laughs> a lot of them. I don't. Well, the shooter is like Ovechkin is obviously a great shooter. Line is a great shooter. Uh, you know, Matthews from Toronto. There's there's so many of them. Every team has like one or two. You're kind of like. You gotta know when they're on the ice because right. things are starting to happen. Still having fun because you you give this really cool demeanor, and it, and for some fans it rubs them the wrong way. I disagree with that. Good. But like, you still <laughs> you're still enjoying this. You're still having fun. This or hockey? No, not <laughs> talking. No, 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 I know no, you're no. not enjoying talking. Here. <laughs> yeah. We are forced you into the this day. spot, yeah. Well, generally, yes. There's yeah. a professional hockey player. Yeah, so I mean, if, if you're not having fun, I don't think there's a reason to play. You know, it, it's just. You know, you, you might get a different picture at times because I get to talk to the media all the time, and you know, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to give too much ammo to the media. So yeah, just smart. Like smart. Yeah, whatever. All right. But I enjoy it because it's fun to mess around with you guys. <laughs> uh, well, listen, I know it didn't. It's end fun the way to have you mess around. Yeah, with us. it's yeah. fun to have you, yeah. and I know it didn't end the way you wanted last year. But, but congratulations on the run individually for you. The, yeah. Some Thank of the best hockey of your career. Appreciate and, it. And uh, nothing but the best going forward. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Tuka. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time. Tuka Rask of the Boston Bruins.